Hi folks and welcome to the next We Paint Minis painting tutorial. This time round I'm going to show you how to paint a Zinch Chaos Warrior. Same one that's on the, the spinny thing there. Just a quick disclaimer, I am trying to improve my videos, so over the coming weeks, months, you may see a difference in the video quality, audio quality, the way it's been put together, all that sort of stuff, but don't worry, I'm just testing new things. So apologies if it seems a little bit haphazard, but I'm doing it to try and give you folks a better video. So be prepared for a video of intrigue, evolution and sorcery. Ooh. Getting straight into it, I have primed this with some Mechanica Standard Grey and I'm going to start basing it with some Dark Reaper. I find Dark Reaper a good colour to base the bright blues of Zine Chin. It gives you a nice dark base to start off with that you can build those highlights upon. Slap it all over, don't be worried about getting anywhere else, we can tidy that up as we go along. Now coming in with some Abaddon Black, being as neat as you can, painting all the cloth under armour. If you do get any paint on the Dark Reaper, then make sure you touch up after. Now give everything you painted a liberal wash of known oil. This will give the appearance of the arm of never being washed, really. Not really dirty, but almost oily and grime that's built up so much, it is black. These steps are very similar to the corn champion I did recently. I'll put a link to the video up in the corner. Be sure to check that out if you wanted to see another perspective using different colours. As I said, the techniques are very similar and the same, but when you have different colours, they give different results. So feel free to check it out. Now back to Dark Reaper, we're going to use a stippling motion to give the effect of beaten metal, like the metal has been worn or the armor has been worn for such a long time that over periods of time it's been dinked and dinged and paint has just been painted over it again or, or something like that. So what you want to do is you want to stipple, try not to use your best brush, I use my one of my best brushes here but try not to because it can mess the bristles up. Just do the stippling motion on the highest points of the armor panel, so where the light is hitting the most. You won't notice a great difference when you do a first sweep, but if you do a few sweeps, or a few coats, probably a better term, isn't it, the sweeps, then you'll end up building up a nice little effect. Using Araman Blue, we're going to use the same technique as we did with the Dark Reaper. However, what we're going to do is we're going to stipple over the top of the Dark Reaper that we've just done, further up the highest points where the highlights are, rather than all over the Dark Reaper. This will give the illusion of a transition from darker to light. Again, take your time. It does take a while, but I think that the results are really worth it. Now onto the paint that's synonymous with anything Zinch related, Temple Guard Blue. We're going to use this wonderful colour to do a very fine edge highlight around all of the armour panelling. I also use this to highlight all the raised gouges in the armour as well. It just really accentuates that battle damage that's been caused over however many hundreds of years of battling. Now onto the fur. These are the same colours and the same techniques as I used on the Corn Champion, so I will go over the steps quite quickly on this one. Whilst I'm all for variation, I wanted to keep these four miniatures quite similar in regards to elements of their armour, i.e. the leather, the fur, stuff like that, because the actual main armour is going to be so different between the four of them. Anyway, now base all of that fur with Rhinox Hide. Now 
Then do an overbrush of Steel Legion Drab. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term overbrush, I wasn't until recently, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. It's much like a dry brush, but rather than using a big brush and removing a lot of it on like a towel or some tissue or something like that, you leave a fair bit of it and you just drag the brush over the top of the raised surfaces. So then what you'll get is you'll get a clear indication of a dark tone underneath and a lighter tone over the top. Exactly like I'm doing in the video. I don't know why um, I'm explaining when it's visible there. <laughs> but still, hopefully that helped. A light dry brush of Karak Stone. Then a healthy splash of Agrax Earthshade all over the fur. Sorry Goomba, I couldn't do it. Now once that's dry, reintroduce those highlights again by using another dry brush of Carrick Stone. Again, these are the same colours as the Corn Chaos Champion. So starting off with Dryad Bark. Some more stippling, this time using Bane Blade Brown. And instead of edge highlighting like some people would, just stipple this along the edges of all the folds of the boots or any other leather that might be on the person or the character that you're painting. And then back in with Carrick Stone once again to do a finer highlight, stippled highlight mind on all those harsh edges. Then whip out your Agrax Earthshade once again and slap it all over. Oh, suit you, sir. Suit you, sir. Oh, suit you, sir. I wanted to pop a colour on the weapon just to set it off against the blue. So I went for Mephiston Red on the hand wrap of his spear. Now, the keen eyed of you folk may realise that I actually painted this before I did the Aquas Earth Shade on the boots. That's just me forgetting where I was, so <laughs> it happens. Don't worry about it, don't fret about it. But now you know. The other keen eyed amongst you might realise this model is a bit kit bashed. I actually cut the sword of this particular unit from the Slaves of Darkness start collecting box set and reattached a Zangor spear not only the head but the bottom as well I left the handguard from the sword because I thought it looked quite cool plus it was dangerously close to the hand so I didn't want to ruin it but I think it looks cool all in all you've got that nice zinch feeling not only that you may see at some point the helmet I added an additional horn in the middle just to uh Add a little bit of flavour and zinchiness to it, also from a Zangor. Moving on from my incoherent babbling, we're going to base all of the chainmail and the head of the spear with lead belcher. Now, I actually paint the head of the spear gold along with the rest of the spear, but then I changed my mind. So, just to prevent you from going, what, 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 later on, lead belcher for the head of the spear. Don't be confused by what I do. <laughs> I get confused with what I do, so I don't need you to be confused either. <laughs> Here we go. Here's where I paint everything gold. <laughs> so yeah, Retributor armor for the gold. You could use something like Gehenna's gold or Balthazar gold, 
but I wanted to do a specific type of gold. So I really like the Royal Regal look of Retributor Armour. But I didn't want the Royal Regal look of Retributor Armour, but I didn't want the really dark versions of Gehenna's gold and Balthazar gold. And you'll see what I do in a minute. Now you get to admire my camera work in all its glory. I'm glorious. I just slather the gold with Agrax Earth Shade rather than Reichland Flesh Shade. I didn't want the warm, clean look that Reichland gives. I wanted a real dirty, gritty, grimy look. And Agrax Earth Shade worked really well for this. Once that shade's dry, I then come back in with Retributor Armour and just kind of touch up all the highlights and all the high points of the armour so they're not completely dulled down. Now you can avoid the dulling down of the metallics first off by wicking up the excess of shade with a wet brush before it dries, but sometimes a bit lazy, I just let it dry and then I tidy it up after. Now I've made it clear that I'm not too keen on painting metallics in my previous videos. Now I'm not bitching and moaning because I absolutely love painting models but metallics are probably my least favourite part of it. I, I feel I don't get a good result all the time which bothers me because I'm a bit of a perfectionist at times. What techniques, parts of the hobby or parts of the model do you hate painting the most? Or have you overcome a hate of painting an area of the model? Let me know in the comments below. Coming in with Liberator Gold, I use it to push the contrast of the dark and dirty gold further by highlighting all the edges. I do that on the spear, on the collar brace thing and on the buckle of his belt, as well as his horniest horns. Oh yeah, I painted the chain across his shield as well. <laughs> oh, well, there we go, look, I've changed the spearhead as well to silver. So what I'm doing here is washing all of that silver area with known oil. Using some Stormhose Silver, I highlight all of the silver bits that I've just done. So the chain, all the rivets as you saw, and the head of the spear, as well as the chainmail. I need to do the chainmail as well. The gold. I forgot the gold as well. I highlighted the gold as well with Stormmost Silver. Oh my word. I'm now going to use a colour that I've not really used a lot of. In fact, I don't think I've even used it at all. Iron Rack Skin. It was part of the range that came out with the Edeneth Deepkin to give that kind of pale greeny blue skin. And I'm going to use it to paint the rune stones on the necklace and the hand on the shield as well because I think it gives like a really nice sickly look. It's really nice for painting white stone as well. and then simply wash over those stones and the hand with Agrax Earthshade. Old faithful, old trusty Agrax Earthshade. Okay. Once the shade's dry, I then come back in with Iron Rack Skin and just touch up all the flat surfaces where the shade has settled on making sure to leave the earth shade in the recesses. And then with some very thin down 
Baharoth blue. I tried to drop it inside the carved runes to give the illusion of them glowing with the power of Zinch. Now folks, I'm torn between two Chaos Gods here. I really like Nurgle, but I really like Zinch as well. Which of the Chaos Gods do you prefer? If you prefer the Chaos Gods at all, let me know in the comments below. We come up to the last few details of the model now, and we're going to come straight in with Zandri Dust and base that small little bird skull hanging on his chainmail loincloth? Question mark? Yep, you guessed it. Agrax Earthshade over the bone. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I use this shade. I'm sure a lot of you folks are probably in the same boat if you use still base paints. If you have equivalent of it then that's awesome but I love Agrax Earth Shade and I would have it on me cornflakes if I could. Once the shade is dry, I then come in with some Yushabdi bone to highlight the raised areas. Followed by a further highlight of Screaming Skull just on the highest point of the skull. That's it, we're on the last part of the model now, the cloak. Some find it very daunting. I agree, it can be very daunting, but just go with the flow. You'll get through at the end, you'll learn, you'll try different ways of doing it. Nothing is wrong, just give it a go. That being said, we're gonna base this one with Celestial Grey. Painting this cloak was very similar to how I painted the White Scar Reaver on my previous video. I'll put a link up in the top corner there. However, I don't recess shade this with known oil. I use a 50-50 mix of Lamium Medium Drakenhof Nightshade. I only put this in the recesses. I do not wash this over the cloak. It'll be a pain to go over after, so just do it in the recesses. Come back in with a very thin down Celestial Grey to cover up any overspill Drakenhof Nightshade that you might have on the cloak. You also want to glaze some of the Celestial Grey down into the recesses, not too far in the recesses where you're going to cover up that Drakenhof Nightshade, but enough where you start to build a transition between the dark and the light. Now do the same glazing technique with a thinned down Orthwan Grey. This time you don't want to go too far into the recesses where the Celestial Grey has been. You want to go a bit further up so you're again gradiating between a dark recessed area of Dragonhof Nightshade up to Celestial Grey into Orthwan Grey. And then finally, use some white scar just to edge highlight the areas around the bottom of the cloak and any of the tattered holes that have a bit of texture to them. Once you finish this step, base the model the same as the rest of your army and you are done. Once again, a massive thank you to everybody who watched this video. I really, really appreciate it. I really hope it taught you something and you enjoyed it. As I said before at the beginning, 
there are elements that I'm changing and I'm getting better at. I'm always trying to improve. If you've got any suggestions, let me know below in the comments. Any ideas of what you'd like to see tutorial wise, let me know as well. I'm always open to ideas. If you like your chaos and you like this video, I've suggested a video here that I recommend you go watch now. Once again, thank you ever so much for watching this video. Keep the hobby alive and I'll catch you next time.